Good day to our lecturer and our friends. Today we will be presenting Smart Home Energy Monitoring System Manual and with a good time. Next is our architecture diagram which is we use AWS Cloud Formation to simulate device and send the data into AWS IoT Core. Then we will use the AWS IoT Analytics to process the data and use the Amazon QuickSight to show the graph of power consumption. As for Amazon SNS, it will be used to give notification when exceed power consumption. Next is the Amazon platform configuration. First, we will sign in into AWS console and then using the AWS console to get the every services that we will be using in this project. My name is Liang Yuan Neng. Student ID is 17011701. This is the Smart Home Energy Monitoring System user manual. I am going to present about AWS Cloud Formation. Using Cloud Formation here is to have IoT device simulator that can simulate the smart home device, which is collecting the power usage data. First, you need to choose any cloud formation here to launch the step. This is the step to launch the step. You need to put the step name, the parameters, and enable the capability. Then click create step. For step creation to be completed, it needs some time. Next, you need credential only can log into IoT device simulator. So this is the step. The following slide is to create simulator smart home device, which is collecting power usage data. And this is the step. Hello, my name is Chen Jianda, and now I'm going to present IoT Core and AWS SNS and how to set out the connection between SNS and IoT Core. First is IoT Core. To set out IoT Core, we need to go AWS services to find the IoT Core. And then we will enter to IoT Core page. And at the left side menu, we will see the test button and we will click on it. Then it will bring us to the subscribe page and then we need to enter the subscribe top, subscription topic and subscribe to topic for the device next it will show the SQL query uh, when the data is successfully uploaded to the IoT core next services is AWS SNS first we will go and find SNS service and then we will go to create topic and we will enter the information as shown uh, in the manual. After success, the message will prompt on the top when the topic is created successfully. Next, we will go to subscription to create a subscription. In topic ARN, we will enter, we will choose what we just create in the topic and set protocol and choose the type of endpoint to subscribe. Which is in this case, we use email and then we create subscription and the message will be shown show on the top when subscription is created successfully and the status will be show as pending confirmation and we should not close this page before we finish everything and we will go to the email that enter in the endpoint and click on the AWS notification that we receive in the email, we can see the confirmed subscription and click on it to continue. Next, it will open up a window and show the subscription to, that is confirmed. And uh, you can click on the unsubscribe if it's not your intention. After this, we will go back to the subscription page. 
that we did not close just now and refresh the page and the status now will be changed to confirm the next step is to create connection between AWS SNS and IoT Core first we will go IoT Core and next we will go to the site menu and find the rules and then we will create the new rules in the rules we will enter the name and description Next, we will go to the SQL query. We will set an event to happen when it is true. Next is, we can choose what is the action we want. And in this case, we are using send a message as SNS push notification. And we will click on the configure action. In the configure action, set the message format as well. Then click on the create row. To create a new role. After we finish creating a new role, it will show the policy attached. Then we will click on the add button, add action. After we click on the add action, we can click on create rules and now AWS SNS will connect to IoT Core. That's all for my part. Thank you. Hello, my name is Liu Chung Hong. My student ID is 1702160. In this session, we will create the IoT analytic component, analyze the data, and define the different pipeline activity. We need to create your IoT analytic S3 storage bucket. First, you will need to create three S3 bucket, one for your IoT analytic channel, one for your data store that hold your transform data, and one for a data set that is result from an IoT analytic SQL query. And these are the steps and picture appropriate permission for IoT analytics to access data store bucket. You, you will also need to give the appropriate permission to IoT analytics to access your data store bucket. These are the steps also, some pay and some code. IoT analytics channel, we will create the IoT analytics channel that will consume data from the IoT core broker and store the data into S3 bucket. And these are the steps some picture picture after that we have to create the iot analytic data store for a pipeline start and picture after that we have to create the iot analytic pipeline and also step and picture uh, your iot analytic pipeline is now set up IoT Analytics Data Set. In this session, we will learn how to use IoT Analytics to extract insight from your data set using SQL over a specific time period. And though these are the steps and picture. Last, we need to execute and save the data set. Data set. And these are the steps. Thank you. Hi, my name is James Yap, and now I'll be talking about the Amazon Quick Site step uh, configuration. So, what you're going to need to do is go to the AWS console and search for Quick Site Service. Click into the service, and it will redirect you to the Quick Site website. If it is your first time using the Quick Site, it will prompt that your account is not signed up for Quick Site, and would you like to sign up now? So click on the sign up for quick site and it will redirect you to the uh, sign up page. And for this example, standard edition is chosen. Uh, it's because uh, it's cheaper and you pay for only what you use and there is no additional fee towards uh, you using standard. Next, uh, fill in the QuickSight account name and notification email address. Then tick Amazon S3 checkbox and choose the S3 bucket. You want to allow access from QuickSight to the bucket. Then you can click finish. Now you have successfully signed up for Amazon QuickSight. Click go to Amazon QuickSight. Now click on new analysis. Click on new data set. Choose AWS IoT Analytics under from new data sources. Name the data source name and select previous data set to be imported. Then uh, 
after it has uh, done importing, click on visualize. Under the field list, choose timestamp to set X axis to for the graph. Click on metering 1, metering 2, and metering 3 to add them to the value column. For each metering value, choose the drop down menu and set aggregate to average. Now, you should have a new graph that is created and ready to be visualized. Okay. Now I'll be talking about cleaning up the resources in the AWS. Uh, if you don't clean up the resources in the AWS, it will uh, incur extra charges uh, to your AWS account, even though you're not using it. So first you can navigate to the AWS cloud formation console to delete the cloud formation stacks and their associated resources. Click on IoT Analytics stack and IoT Device Simulator and click Delete. Note that deleting these stacks can take several minutes. Navigate to the Amazon ECS console and click on Repository under Amazon ECR. Select Container-App-IA and click Delete. Next, navigate to the AWS EC2 console. Click on Key Pairs in the left navigation pane. Choose the EC2 key pair you have created to SSH to Docker instance and click delete. Next, navigate to the S3 management console and delete the following. The three buckets that you have created previously, uh, ending with a dash channel, dash data set, and dash data store. Each bucket with the prefix IoT devices simulator. Delete all of them. Uh, finally, navigate to the AWS IoT Analytics console and check that if all of your pipelines, datasets, and channels have been deleted. It should be deleted by the previous step. If it is not, you can manually delete them from the console. And that is all for my presentation. Uh, thank you very much.